हेलो एवरीवन आई होप द ऑडियो विजुअल इज गोइंग वेल सो प्लीज जस्ट से हाई टू मी इफ यू कैन हियर मी सी मी इफ द ऑडियो विजुअल इज ओके और आई फाइन सो आई थिंक आई कैन जस्ट क्विकली गेट गोइंग बिकॉज द टाइम वी हैव इज वेरी लिमिटेड सो दिस इज पर्टिकुलरली अ सेशन आई हैव केप्ट टू डिस्कस विद यू little about the ligament injuries that involve the knee joint so that will be the focus you know my focus for this particular session uh trying to discuss the ligament injuries of the knee joint so with you guys in i think without wasting much of time we can quickly get started all right so on the go guys let me take up this first mcq with you a patient he sustained a hyper extension injury at the knee and it's just been 2 days back i'll underline the important point hyper extension injury at the knee and this has just been 2 days back now since it's a fresh injury in such cases it is expected that the knee might have hematrosis hematrosis means blood in the joint okay so this blood would have distended the capsule and capsule is the most pain sensitive structure in the joint so we expect the knee to be painful now i want to know from you which of the following will be the most appropriate clinical test to perform in this particular scenario so that's you know what you guys have to let me know would it be the latchman test would it be the metmoris test would it be the anterior row test or no simply you know it's just two days old injury why hurry up in the diagnosis part it's not an emergency so now the above test should be performed in an acute injury where there is hematrosis to avoid troubling the patient with an acute episode of pain so so please feel free to answer this one guys absolutely no negative marking in my class okay so whatever comes to your mind you can put in as the answer uh, rather i would encourage you to answer here because you know you commit a mistake here that will just become a memory okay so quickly quickly abhi says a latchman test okay any more votes any more votes coming in okay a latchman test any more people anyone with a different opinion rajdeep says c anterior row test anyone with still a different opinion yes yes please please pour in your choices okay d none of the above clinical test should be performed in the acute setting fine enough so i'll just give you the answer after a little bit of description uh, then we come to the conclusion so first point here hyper extension injury at the knee you have to know which ligament is going to have the tear because you know there are some tests that are denoting tear of acl there is a test that's denoting a tear of a meniscus so first you need to know this pattern would injure which ligament and then we come back to its examination how we examine that ligament especially if there is hematrosis or a painful knee a fresh injury now knee joint is stabilized by these two cruciate ligaments in the center this one in the front is the acl anterior cruciate ligament and this one at the back is the pcl the posterior cruciate ligament now if you look at their pattern very classical arrangement acl is going laterally and attaching to this lateral condyle of the femur here while pcl is going medially and attaching to this medial condyle of the femur here so the two ligaments are going in two opposite direction and crossing each other in the medio lateral direction but if you will observe the acl is starting in front on tibia and this is going back and then inserting on the femur while pcl is just doing the opposite it is starting at back on tibia and then you can see it is coming in front to insert on femur so acl is going from front to back and pcl is going from back to front so these ligaments are also crossing each other in the front back direction now please see this particular diagram very nice diagram see this ligament here it is starting in front on the tibia and then is going back to insert on the femur so starting in front on the tibia and going back to insert on the femur so do i need to tell you which will be this ligament that is starting in front on tibia and going back to insert on femur so i think you can very well pick it up that this is basically going to be the acl anterior cruciate ligament so you can very well imagine that if this tibia will be you know pulled in front like you can see this tibia i have pulled it in front 
you can see this ACL getting the stretch and I pull the tibia too much in front the ACL will tear up the ACL will tear up. so basically a forward movement of tibia will stretch and tear the ACL now imagine the PCL that is just an opposite ligament starting in back on tibia going in front to attach on femur so this ligament here would be the PCL now if you look at this PCL it's just going in the opposite direction so you can very well imagine that if you push the tibia back this PCL will go back stretch up and tear so in a very very simple way ACL is going to prevent the tibia from moving anteriorly over the femur and PCL is basically going to prevent the tibia from sagging posteriorly over the femur <coughs> so that would be the job of the ACL as well as the PCL okay now please have a look at these two injury patterns what I have shown in the first injury pattern a hyper extension injury occurring at the knee and what I have shown in the second injury picture a hyperflexion injury occurring at the knee now this gentleman is holding the leg and the leg and the knee of this patient is going into hyper extension see here now if you will just notice here the leg it has gone anteriorly see this is the knee and this is the leg so note the relation of the leg with the knee the leg has gone in front now I've just told you when the tibia goes in front this ligament ACL is stretched and broken so this simply tells you that with a hyperextension injury you are going to find tears with the ACL and this is a hyperflexion injury pattern he is hitting from the front so the leg is going to go back leg goes back the ligament that tears up leg goes back the ligament that tears up would be the PCL so hyperflexion injury at the knee would be leading to PCL tears our case was a case of hyperextension injury at the knee that the MCQ we discuss that means we were dealing with a case of ACL tear now let me take you a step forward ACL is examined by either of the two popular tests anterior row test or the latchman test now if you see this anterior row test in the go you will find the hip is almost in like 45 degrees of flexion but this knee is almost in a degree of in a, in a state of 90 degree flexion so you are very much now clear that the flexion at the knee is 90 degree in this anterior draw test with this picture now here this surgeon is going to pull the knee towards the side this leg sorry okay and try to see that anterior movement the ACL of this leg will be torn you will be able to pull this tibia more anteriorly as compared to the normal side so that's how we perform the anterior draw test in this 90 degree of knee flexion now the problem 90 degree of knee flexion is not suited in an acute injury because of that hemarthrosis painful knee see acute injury you bend this knee to like 90 degree the problem at the back of the thigh here here you have those muscles called hamstrings if there will be sudden pain in the knee the hamstring muscles might contract and if these hamstrings on back of the thigh contract they might just you know hold the tibia so even if you try to pull the hamstrings are holding the tibia you would not get this anterior movement because of the hamstring spasm so acute injury anterior drop test become results become false negative despite an ACL tear the hamstrings hold the tibia because of spasm and you can't pull so in acute setting it is more encouraging to just place the knee in 20 degree of knee flexion that is what you do in the latchman test see here this 20 degree of knee flexion holding the thigh in one hand the leg in the other hand so now this leg you can pull you find more anterior movement means there is no ACL and you can always compare with the other side so this modification of the anterior draw test the same test in 20 degree of knee flexion is the test that is more suited for acute injury because it's less of knee flexion hardly any knee flexion just 20 degree okay so this is what we do generally in acute injuries and in fact 
in fact here if you read now you can pick up everything you are dealing with hyper, hyper extension injury at the knee that means you are dealing with ACL tears so you cross out a test that is not of ACL tear McMurray test is a test that detects meniscal tear so this is gone so that means I am left with either of the two tests ok the flexion you are going to need here is 20 degree knee flexion the flexion you are going to need here will be 90 degree knee flexion now this particular scenario can be painful especially in acute injury this would not be painful so this becomes the answer now with the latchman test you can detect an acute injury that is just two days old you can detect even a chronic injury the 20 degree knee flexion will be no problem at least in a chronic injury so when you can detect both acute and chronic injury I hope you are clear that this is going to be taken as the more sensitive test for the ACL over and above the anterior draw test because anterior draw test can only detect injuries when the knee is not painful where 90 degree of knee flexion is possible even if this flexion is not possible with the latchman test you can even pick up an ACL injury so more sensitive test for ACL can simply be taken as latchman test so I hope you guys are pretty much clear with with this particular answer here ok so let's make the things a little more tougher now this patient who's come to you his complaint anterior laxity of tibia is there with the knee extension but this laxity is not there when the knee is in flexion I'll put it up in a better way you are examining anterior movement in extended knee the translation is positive you are examining the same anterior laxity of tibia in a flexed knee the laxity is negative not coming so examiner simply wants you to tell him which bundle of ACL seems to be torn out of four anterior medial bundle posterior lateral bundle posterior medial bundle anterior lateral bundle so ACL has two bundles two bundles so which bundle of ACL seems to be torn quickly quickly yeah so extended knee you have the laxity flex knee you don't have the laxity so which bundle seems to be torn I suppose very easy I'm sure we're gonna have people who are going to give me the answer very easily very quickly yes Mitten, Rajdi, Pabi, SS, Giri quickly so so please submit your opinion no negative marking as I always say okay no problem anterior medial bundle this is what Giri says uh, it's actually not uh, and it's actually posterior lateral bundle of the ACL there that'll be the better answer so, so I, I suppose you know why you have you know uh, uh, gone across the wrong options because I think you are not clear with the detailed anatomy of the ACL see if you talk of this ligament anterior cruciate ligament it actually is made up of two bundles two bundles like this so this is the zoomed in picture of the ACL so there is an anterior medial bundle and there is a posterior lateral bundle AM PM so two bundles in the ACL so one is the anterior medial bundle okay and the second is the posterior lateral bundle all right now the two bundles would do the same thing prevent the tibia from moving forwards both have the same function the difference this anterior medial bundle works when you are keeping the knee in the flexed position and the posterior lateral bundle is the main functioning bundle of the ACL when the knee is placed in relatively the extended position so in the extended knee what is guarding against anterior laxity is the posterior lateral bundle and in a flexed knee what is guarding against anterior laxity is the anterior medial bundle here you have laxity in extension not in flexion so which bundle is torn posterior lateral bundle that is the answer but yes I would like to take you through the true relevance behind this question see the anterior middle bundle is the thicker bundle twice the size of the posterior lateral bundle so it is AM bundle that is the dominant bundle in the ACL okay 
so which simply means that if you are going to have a partial tear in the ACL because not every time you will have a serious injury that can rupture both the bundles so when you just have a partial tear in the ACL what you are going to tear up would be the posterior lateral bundle clear now partial tears would involve posterior lateral bundle this part is clear to you now there are two tests for ACL as I told you that we generally perform in our clinical practice one test that is conventionally performed is the anterior draw test the second test that is very conventionally performed is the latchman test fine now I told you the knee flexion in anterior drawer and latchman test anterior drawer it was 90 degree knee flexion latchman test it was 20 degree knee flexion so I hope that clears to you that anterior draw test is basically done in a flexed position of the knee and latchman test is relatively done in a very much extended position of the knee so what I'm trying to simply tell you the anterior draw test is predominantly checking the anterior medial bundle and the latchman test is predominantly checking the posterior lateral bundle because because you're doing this test in flex knee 90 degree flexion you're doing this test in extended knee just 20 degree flexion it's basically an extended knee so latchman test is focusing more on posterior lateral bundle than anterior draw test is focusing more on anterior medial bundle so this means that even if there will be a partial tear where only posterior lateral bundle will be torn a test that can come out to be positive latchman test so this test can even detect partial tears in the ACL so it can actually be called as the more sensitive test for the ACL because that is what a sensitive test would be that can pick up any type of injury acute injury chronic injury full tears partial tears so are you guys clear with the relevance behind the tests for the ACL how do you decide which test when and what is the logic behind each test clear Mithun, Ruhi, Rajdeep, Megha, Giri SS. So, so I hope you are clear with this answer also ok uh, you, are, you are thoroughly clear with the relevance behind these tests also so 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 let's move to another very interesting question a question that marked with a lot of controversy but I am going to clear your mind of all these controversies ok a patient he is now come to you who sustained a hyperextension injury at the knee so with this now you are clear that what you are likely going to tear is your ACL ok very much ok there is a tear of ACL so the question is fully correct now the examiner simply wants to break this part to ask you this part which of the following movement is responsible for this tear is it the femur moving back on tibia or is the tibia moving back forwards on femur or both are same movements equally contributing or no there is some kind of a fallacy I have somewhere fooled you with some kind of a googly a hyperextension injury does not tear the ACL yes so, so can I have some people now answering me this one? Yes, guys. So, so which movement do you think leads to ACL tear, femur going back, tibia moving forwards? Both movement can contribute, doesn't matter. Or hyperextension injury is not actually the injury that tears the ACL. Okay, B and C, tibia moving forwards on femur. Okay, so I take the answer of the house as, as tibia moving forwards on femur because most of you are stuck at this option B, B, B. Some people say that both movements contribute. Okay. So I got it. So you guys are just not clear with the mechanism behind an ACL tear. How hyperextension injury leads to tears in the ACL. See. So I've zoomed into that picture where I'm trying to explain to you how this hyperextension injury leads to ACL tears. So this gentleman is holding the leg. I hope you can see this knee going into that position of hyperextension. Okay. So you can very well note this tibia that has gone anteriorly in the front as compared to the knee. So tibia going in front would be tearing the AC. Now I hope you are very much clear with that concept in the anatomy. The bone that is on the ground like here the tibia is on the ground. The leg is on the ground so tibia is on the ground. The bone on the ground does not move in a movement it is the bone in the air that moves like what I am trying to say 
suppose i am sitting on a chair and i am flexing and extending my knee now i am in the sitting position my leg is in the air so when i flex and extend the knee it is the tibia that moves but mind you i try to get up from the chair so i put my tibia on the ground foot on the ground so now i try to get up so now also there is flexion extension at the knee but now the bone that moves is femur because it is the femur now that is in the air so whichever bone will be in the air will be moving not the bone on the ground so if you see this classical pattern this hyper extension injury occurring at the knee let me tell you the golden point here you will always find that tibia will be grounded see a knee in the air can never have a hyper extension injury put your knee in the air and just show me how can you extend beyond neutral not possible until unless someone holds your knee and cracks it and that is never allowed in sports rules are against it so by and large if a hyper extension injury has to occur in sports the leg has to be on the ground the tibia has to be on the ground so this simply tells you that tibia is going to be the stationary bone so whatever movement has to happen has to happen with the femur so that is what happens your tibia that is grounded so it is the femur that moves back so reciprocally the tibia goes in front tearing the acl tibia reciprocally moving forwards on the femur so this is the exact mechanism of injury in hyperextension that's breaking your acl okay so if you see here the femur move will, will be moving back on tibia tibia grounded can't move actually tibia has to go in go forwards to break the acl so even if femur goes back even if femur goes back it will be tibia going forwards only same thing so do giri are you now clear with this picture that if your leg is on the ground like you see here the leg is on the ground so what has actually happened is that this femur has gone back here so that is why the knee has gone into extension so the femur has gone back so the knee has gone into extension so clear guys why i said that it is the femur that moves back and breaks the acl in the real practical scenario because take my words a hyper extension injury in sports can only happen if you are bearing weight if your knee is in the air it will never have a hyper extension injury okay so so this is how the hyper extension is generally happens with the leg on the ground so tibia becomes the fixed bone so it is the femur that goes back because femur is the only free bone to move okay so femur goes back to extend your knee and when the femur goes back reciprocally the tibia has gone in front so this is going to tear this ligament acl clear guys so clear with this one this is a question from the jipmer paper and lot of people were very much confused as to what is the answer okay okay so i i'll try sharing this up later i'll tell you how i can share okay so patient has so let's take up this last one and then we discuss other things so patient has sustained a knee injury while playing football x ray has been done and there is a chip fracture visible along the proximal lateral tibial margin i have marked this chip for you with that arrow i hope you can very well pick up there's a small chip here okay so you have to tell me the ligament that has ruptured this chip okay so what ligament seems to be ruptured with this chip the acl the lcl the lateral meniscus or or the pcl so 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 quickly guys so which ligament seems to be ruptured here uh, so please please share your opinion with me which ligament seems to be ruptured here acl lcl okay <clears throat> so vote for acl or vote for lcl a vote for lcl So Rajdeep, Mithun, both banking for LCL. Okay, I vote for lateral meniscus also. Fine. So, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you my opinion here. It is ACL. I know, I know. Some people will be 
thinking what nonsense you know this is a chip on the lateral side so how can this be acl i'll tell you at least this cannot be lcl because this lateral collateral ligament see here this attaches to the head of fibula lcl is not attached on to the tibia and this is a chip from tibia so it's not lcl either or lateral meniscus either i'll tell you there is something called a second fracture okay second fracture now this second fracture involves acl tear but along with it in these cases you have anterior lateral capsular avulsion from tibia so this small chip that was visible to you was the capsule avulsing from the tibia it was the capsular avulsion this is a known association because of maybe some kind of injury patterns we don't yet understand so what i mean to say that whenever you will see this capsular avulsion from the tibia by default you will find these people having acl tears because this is that second fracture that association clear guys in fact most of the current studies say that this anterior lateral capsule avulsion is another ligament about which now we are getting to know that is called anterior lateral ligament so actually this is a tear of anterior lateral ligament that occurs after acl tears with the same modes of injuries clear guys so more and more we are getting to know about the anterior lateral ligament now and for this particular type of an injury there you have acl tear plus anterior lateral ligament tear the term that we use is an anterior lateral instability at the knee and this anterior lateral instability at the knee is diagnosed by a special test that is called a pivot shift test so this pivot shift test has to be that specific test with which you pick up an anterior lateral ligament injury at the knee okay but this is always in association with an acl tear isolated tears of anterior lateral ligament are not known maybe because it is injured by a most severe form of injury that tears the acl and in fact sometimes the examiner will ask you that please tell me the most specific test for acl so this is where the answer will come out to be pivot shift test okay because when pivot shift test comes out to be positive it is even the anterior lateral ligament that is gone this capsular revulsion is also there in these cases you have to have an acl tear because anterior lateral instability is the most severe form of anterior instability that is only acl tear so this is the test which when positive means 100% acl is torn so this is the most specific test for acl so most sensitive test will be latchman test it can detect every damn type of injury but yes it can sometimes be false positive a test that is positive means acl tear means specific that will be pivot shift test so i hope you are clear even with these some special patterns involving the acl tears if you wish to learn more on this go for the plus subscription so ruhi pdfs can only be given in the plus subscription okay or the iconic subscription where you take for an academy and prep ladder here it's not possible for me to share the pdf but i'll still let you know one way by which you can gain this pdf okay so meanwhile just letting you know about some limited time offers okay very discounted prices going on even that four year subscription okay uh, very economical prices okay in case you've just joined into your your mbbs okay you can avail a four year subscription at so economical prices and then uh, these boosters are also there for you take three months get one month free so aiming for your neat and other exams a very good pattern for you to subscribe okay so just letting you know some important batches that are coming up uh neat pg seasons batch 23rd of june it starts with some of the best educators a batch for third professional students 23rd of june this is again starting very soon uh this is the test calendar so quickly have a look and choose your slots the test that you wish to give keep testing yourself okay 
you can use this code ortholife in case you wish to avail 10% off okay uh, the all india mock test is coming soon on 27th of march so please 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 uh, go with this okay uh, 2022 high yield mcq marathon batch is starting soon with almost all good educators okay and the fmg batch also starting soon so fmg or neat pg both preparants there are choices for you to join on this uh, the neat pg subscription the prices are very well available on the uh, website itself and then as i told you you can use this code ortho life and you can snatch your 10 percent off fine so that's the list of the toppers we've had and we'll be looking forward to having your subscribers in the next toppers on an academy so thank you guys that's all from my side ruhi this is a telegram group i run t.me dr mukul ortho you can put in your request there and i'll try sharing the pdf from today's class okay so that will be the easiest way otherwise the same uh, you know stuff is already there on the plus also i can share the link with you maybe sometime and you can download the pdf from there because after you opt for a plus class that you have the plus subscription you attend a plus class after the class you can download everything but dear uh, the only problem here the things that are written on these slides are not saved so maybe i can share the pictures with you but i can't share the written material you have to see to your own notes but maybe i can share it up from the plus classes sometime fine okay so there's a question from dr giri shoulder labral tear repair with implant arthroscopic repair yes so the the question here that if there's a labral tear in the shoulder uh can you get an mri done after the repair because an implant that has been used to fix the labrum well the implant that has been used is made of titanium it's not made up of uh, steel titanium is non magnetic does not interfere with the magnetic field of the mri there are other implants also that are made up of polyether ether ketone they can also be used they are also mri friendly in fact whenever we use an implant around the joint we generally try to use implants that are uh, that are friendly to mri non magnetic because many a times we might need mri to evaluate even the results of the surgery or the failure cases so that implant has been designed so that you know you can go ahead and get an mri done so feel free proceed okay so i hope that clarifies your doubt so any other queries please please this telegram group you can channel up. okay and in the end just reminding you my referral code ortho life with which you can stick to your 10% off so bye bye guys see you again